great. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Uh, so again, my name is Brian Matsumoto. Happy to join you all. Good evening. Um, let's set the context. Uh, the San Gabriel Mountains, uh, a portion which is within Conservancy territory, is obviously beloved by so many people, you know, part on fire right now, which is traumatic and horrible, but of course we, we all hope for the best. Um, the situation is fundamentally there is no equitable access up to the mountains because there's literally no way if you don't have transportation to get up there. And so many people have been working on transit to trails solutions for the San Gabriel Mountains. There's been successful pilots over a number of years. And so we're happy to share with the Conservancy uh, the San Gabriel Mountains Transit and Infrastructure Program and specifically a route that is within the Conservancy territory. Uh, so this proposal uh, hits key Conservancy priorities around community access, um, folks who do not have the ability to get up into the mountains and experience nature, um, the opportunity to reach whole new diverse populations and specifically disadvantaged communities in our most part poor communities in LA, um, communities of color and low income communities. Uh, it hits climate goals as well, because obviously putting folks on transit will get cars off the road, reduce those GHG emissions. And we have a zero emission vision for, for um, these lines that really sync up well with the idea of getting LA into a sustainable green city movement by the 2028 Olympics, the world can see, you know, these zero emission shuttles taking folks up to the mountains. And finally, growing that education and stewardship to all of our communities equitably. So we all know LA County is probably the largest park poor county in the nation. And lack of transportation is usually cited as the number one or number two barrier folks get if you don't have access, you're not going to get outdoors. Um, at the same time, uh, this photo of the cars is from Chantry Flats. The most popular destinations in the forest are plagued by too many cars and small parking lots. So uh, the other hand is needing to reduce those vehicular impacts. The great opportunity we have here with the San Gabriel Mountain is that transit to trails can be a real game changer with relatively little um, investment. It, it's, a, it's a gap between public transit and public lands. And if we can connect that gap, we can link diverse families up to the Sanger Mountains, which are 70% of LA County's open space. So currently 70% is not accessible to, uh, you know, our one in 20 Americans, which live within a 90 minute drive. So this vision, uh, which we've been coordinating with many partners across the region, is about linking up the Metro Gold Line, which comes so close to the foothills, uh, but doesn't have those connections up to the mountains, right? Um, so this red circle is the Pasadena Memorial Park uh, Station, and um, we'll talk about that further. <coughs> Everyone's probably familiar with the county's park needs assessment map. And in red, this indicates the highest need communities in our county, which have the least access to parks. And the overlaid colors are our metro rail system. So downtown is in the middle with the red line, gold line, blue aqua expo all intersecting. And you can see how quite easily we can grab a very large core of disadvantaged community residents, get them on the Metro rail, get them up to the gold line and have access to the mountains in you know, 45 to 45 minutes to an hour's time. Um, this map pulls data about the severely disadvantaged communities in orange. And by our estimate, three quarters of a million residents in these neighboring communities that are 
within one mile walking distance to Metro Rail Station will be able to gain access to the San Gabriel Mountains. So as an example, my coworker Kim, she lives in East LA. There's, uh, she does not have a car, no access to the mountains. With this transportation system, she could easily hop on the gold line with her family, be up to that Pasadena station in about half an hour and be whisked up to Mount Wilson, which is our vision for today. So uh, let's talk about the Mount Wilson Express route. Um, we've done kind of preliminary talks with many of the partners, the Forest Service, Hadamakna American Indian Cultural Center, and um, obviously Mount Wilson folks are, are busy right now. So with all fingers crossed, you know, this can be a really formative vision um, so as we indicated here I have a little pointer a simple shuttle could come from the Pasadena Memorial Park Gold Line hop on the 210 freeway be up here in about 25 minutes to Switzer Falls which is a hugely popular hiking destination um, even now during COVID it's packed with people. Multiple trailheads here and, and then a series of other trailheads. The Haramakna American Indian Cultural Center at the Red Box um, intersection, uh, which the Conservancy is investing resources in to help renovate their building. Uh, so this would really leverage the Conservancy's um, investments there and get more folks up, up to those educational opportunities. Then the Eaton Saddle Trailhead, which leads to the historical Mueller Tunnel, um, Bear Canyon Trail, which comes all the way down to Switzer again. And then finally, obviously, Mount Wilson Observatory with its multiple trailheads down to Chantry Flat, uh, Cosmic Cafe to have lunch, scenic views, and, you know, People wonder why isn't this already a, a bus destination when it's it's a historic, globally significant um, destination. So this is the vision, and we just wanted to talk territory. Um, this is the Conservancy's map, and so we've determined, um, thanks to Brian Baldoff's help, that you know. Highway 2 all the way up to the Red Box intersection is in the territory. Um, the road to Mount Wilson is the boundary line. Uh, this purple line is the Conservancy territory. And then finally, Mount Wilson itself is on the very edge of the Conservancy's territory. And it also overlays with the Rivers and Mountains Conservancy territory, which is in black. So this opportunity um, is really an exciting chance for the Conservancy to really invest in community access. Uh, over the past four years, there's been a slew of shuttle test pilots to demonstrate and test out that these types of things can work. And Nature for All has run a community access shuttle to Hadamakna and Redbox super popular. Other ones have included Sam Merrill Trail with City of Pasadena, Chantry Flat uh, with the Forest Service in Arcadia, and Fish Canyon with Duarte. Um, and so everyone's looking at, you know, possibilities to do all these things, but the Mount Wilson Express is a one of the only multi-destination opportunities that could really make this a, a very big success. And we just wanted to share a quote from one of our trips. Most of these people are first time visitors and one young man shared, you know, today I went to one of the most magnificent green spaces I have ever been to. And that was at Sturdivant Falls. So you can imagine how life changing this is for our really inner city core um, target population. So, Mr. Mesonovo, uh, yes. question for you. You said yes. that uh, the observatory, the famous Hooker telescope, was on the cusp 
So which side is it? Uh, is it the side uh, where uh, San Michael Mountains Conservancy <laughs> and uh, claim some right of first refusal to uh, go up there and look at that? Or is it the, uh, I won't say hated, but the... Uh, <laughs> Our competitive, your friends at the army, <laughs> uh, that was so aptly. Uh, Sorry, I didn't catch that, Joe. But um, honestly, the answer to that question is we need help from your side, from the conservancy, to really look at that in detail. Um, we were able to look at it very quickly with some of your staff. And so that was the best determination we could come up with. But um, we would need uh, your help to get into your maps a little further. I, I don't hear Joe talking, so I'll just wrap these last few slides up, um, if you don't mind. Uh, OK, thanks. Uh, so uh, so before you, you know, Nature for All is uh, putting this proposal um, and the ask is for a planning and scoping grant because there's obviously a lot of pre-work that needs to be done to even get to what is the actual scope and, and what are we trying to design here. Um, about a 30K uh, sum seems about right for the planning and feasibility uh, to really cover investigating at each one of these potential stops, um, the significant transportation, traffic engineering that would need to be done to install shuttle stops and redo parking and that kind of thing. Um, community engagement and input is really key as well uh, to get from the community, you know, will this be a success? Is this the place that people want to go to? work with Metro to get the timetables. Um, but by all indications, this will be a really popular route. Um, there will be, obviously, once the system's running, uh, we have key partnerships with Metro to have ads, to, to promote this through all our different partners. Um, but we want to highlight that the opportunity to develop this with the MRCA is really key because the MRCA has the skill to keep the costs down and develop the designs of all these shuttle stops um, so that, you know, perhaps we don't have to go to outside uh, contractors. And so what this looks like, obviously, is, you know, shuttle stops, maybe not to the grandiose Yosemite scale, but you need infrastructure to drop off and receive people, obviously. Um, so as an example, uh, this is West Fork uh, stop at San Gabriel Canyon, where we've done preliminary investigation and like, you know, flip the parking lot around, have a shuttle drop off zone, install a shade structure, wayfinding signage so that people have a, a safe place to wait. And this is Chantry Flat, similar drawing, indicating how uh, a turnaround would be um, put in place in the existing parking lot. So, you know, not uh, rocket science, but absolutely simple key infrastructure to make vision happen. Um, just to wrap it up, there's a ton of support for this vision across the region, the Board of Supervisors, um, Foothill Transit, the San Gabriel Valley COG, Hadamakna, obviously, and many of our community partners from Sierra Club, Forest Foundation, all the way to REI, as well as the Community Collaborative. Um, so we are happy to take your questions. I saw a raised hand, so please uh, ask away. Yes, Madam Chair, I see Mr. Mnookin has his hand up. Okay. Hello? Can you hear me? Hi. We can hear you. Uh, considering that um, the representative from the city of Glendale, I was wondering if uh, and I saw in your one of your maps that the city of Glendale has some uh, under underserved area areas as well. Uh, I was wondering, does Glendale, it, it, Burbank as well, actually, 
do they come into your visioning uh, plan at all or is it outside your boundaries um there's kind of two points to that to respond to that um the key kind of hookup is with the gold line because of the major investment in the rail line that can bring folks from all different points that are already connected to the metro rail. So the other part of that is cities will be able to, you know, use their own shuttle services and apply for grants from Metro's transit to parks funding. And so once the shuttle stops are put into place in the forest, then there will be places to drop off and receive uh, visitors. So for example, you know, Glendale using their own transit system, for example, could run up to the mountain itself as well. Um, just for this initial round, we're trying to really connect to the gold line because it represents the, the biggest way to access the most people in the county. And, and the gold line uh, circumvents Glendale, basically. <laughs> right, but I guess, much. but so... <clears throat> From what so, I saw on the map, yes. Right, right, right. Glendale but and Burbank area, yes. The, the kind of solutions to that that we see being possible are other cities <laughs> delivering smaller shuttles directly to the Pasadena uh, pickup. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I do, but considering where cities are and everyone's running deficits basically right now, that is right, right, probably right. an impossibility for the next foreseeable future. So five to, I've seen their five to 10 year planning and, you know, there are no funds for additional services, but, but well, I understand, uh, I understand your focus at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, I, and, I just, yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, and, and we have been pushing hard uh, to Metro to invest more and more on the transit to parks uh, strategic plan that they've committed to. So there's at least $1 million right now that they've committed to putting into grant programs available to all the municipalities. And so it's definitely up to all the stakeholders out there to push them to make more and more funding available for this exact reason. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. Madam Chair, this is uh, Miguel. May I ask a question? Sure, absolutely, Miguel. Please. Thank you. Uh, well, I remember the days of uh, taking the number four RTD line uh, from the Rampart area out to the ocean, and I think that's that was the only way I was able to um, visit the ocean. It was taking the number four, so I appreciate um, the need and, and and the scope of this assessment. I'm wondering, it, it seems like it's such a vast, avocado is for good. It's yeah. su such a vast area. I'm wondering if, if is 30,000 sufficient? This is painful. Nature to, for all. Ms. Pavley, you two need your, to <laughs> Okay, we get to proceed. Yeah. All right. Well, well, maybe, maybe we'll hear from Ms. Pavley. Uh, afterwards but um, so my my comment is I'm wondering if uh, th because of the vast uh, area if 30,000 is sufficient for the study so I know Brian you said approximately so what got you to 30 and do you think that's enough thank you thank you uh, mr. Brian do you want to respond Sure, and uh, Belinda, feel free to jump in as well, because this is just for scoping and like project development. So after that point is is the real design and engineering, and, you know, infrastructure construction. Okay, thank you, Ms. Pavley. Did you have a comment? Not too many comments, other than I know Belinda for years and years, and their good work. For nature for all is something we need to pay attention to. So um, I'm eager to support whatever they have in mind. Okay, thank you. Um, Madam Chair, we have a number of hands raised. Okay. Who is first? Ms. Lopez. Ms. Lopez was first, and I believe then Mr. Verez and Mr. Yapari and on the phone as well. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. This is um, Edlin Lopez. I'm 
calling in part of the advisory committee. I rarely speak um, during these meetings, but I really did want to commend that presentation more than anything because if that were to happen, if this project were to happen, it would provide access to not only the communities where I come from, from Southeast Los Angeles, but also South Los Angeles where the Conservancy and the MRCA, from what I have been able to tell from the maps, they only have a couple of open spaces or um, open area spaces in the inner city Los Angeles area. So I just really think that there is such an impact that you would make in the younger generations as far as um, environmental stewardship is concerned. So thank you for bringing that to the Conservancy. Thank you, Ms. Lopez. 